What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the most important NYCFC talk show. It's time for the Dudes in Blue. Uh, it's episode 127. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, if you're live on Facebook and if you're tuning in on the podcast, thanks so much for hanging out with us for a little bit. I'm your host, Joe Amato, and alongside me, my confidant. Antonino, what's up, dude? Dude, what's happening? Oh, God. Listen, it's a good thing we don't have to watch this crap for another three weeks. Same story, just a different Monday, dude. Uh, I don't understand. So now we can go back and answer our questions from last week of, is this a turning point? Is this a meaningful game? I guess not. <laughs> well, we don't really answer have to go back. Same. We just You just answered it, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah. all right, guys. So uh, start leaving the comments on Facebook if you're watching live. And uh, if you don't already, please give us a follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are at Dudes in Blue. It's very, very easy to get a hold of us. Uh, tonight... We are going to be talking about NYCFC losing to Minnesota United in Minnesota. They played phenomenally well, dude. I, I, I'm just putting, I'm just telling you right now, they played incredibly well. We're going to dissect that game a little bit, um, very similarly to the way that we've been dissecting the last uh, eight or ten games, uh, something like that, right? So we're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about Ben Sweat getting a uh, international call up and. Uh, Making going to be making his debut, hopefully, for the U.S. men's national team, which is always good news for an NYCFC player. And uh, and that's that's pretty much it. So right off the bat, dude, let me just say hi to a couple people before we dive into this uh, disaster game. Who's here? We got Jorge checking in. We've got Henry. What's up? Jason Pena. Uncle Dom coming in hot. Roddy Russell's back in the broadcast. What's going on there, hey, Roddy? Hey. Steven Berg is checking in. Uh, Christian Smith is coming in here as well. Joey, as usual. Lalo. Coco is still stressed from Saturday. Well, we are too. Chris Martinez is hanging out with us. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, share this broadcast, by the way. Smash that share button if you can uh, with your NYCFC friends and just uh, spread the word about what the dudes in blue are doing. So, dude, they lost. Big surprise or not? Um, I won't say surprise. I'll say big disappointment, like wind out of the sails, just, just utterly disappointed. Uh, and I just don't know what, I don't know what to feel about this team anymore because there are some valid excuse, not so much excuses, but there are valid reasons why certain things could be happening. But my heart and my head are, like, in two different places when it comes to these guys. Uh, was it a different lineup? Yes. Were you missing two key players? Yes. But does that really excuse, you know, every other player from from the poor quality? I, I, and 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 then you, you bring in the coach. And is it the coach? Is it the players? Is it the... Systems and the scheduling is it is it any one particular thing or is it all of these things? And and thinking about it just totally brings me down a level to the point where I'm not even excited to watch these games anymore. Uh, it's really sad, and, and not that I won't watch and and I'll enjoy, but it, it's like I'm not as hyped, I'm not as ready. Uh, I'm more pessimistic now than ever throughout this season. Just because this team cannot seem to figure it out, whether it's a coaching thing or whether it's an execution thing, I, I just think it's not – something is not working, and I have zero to little faith that they can figure this out because they look so bad. I, I – look, we've been talking about not, – not necess- I, I, I don't want to call them excuses because they're facts, right? We've yeah, been dealing they, with injuries. They, we've yeah. been dealing with injuries. We've been dealing – we dealt with international duty for a little while. We dealt with scheduling issues, right? But all of that being said, dude, in in the last 10 games, 10 matches, the team that we have has yet to been able to put anything decent together except for possessing the ball. Now, look – if you're missing, if you're missing your star players, whether it be due to injury or whether it be due to uh, international duty, like like take David Villa for example, dude. This team found a way to win and get results and get goals without David Villa. So it's not beyond this club to be able to string together results missing key players. Right. My my issue is 
what is it that that has changed? And obviously, we know what has changed. And and and, and I'm don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not on the Dome out kick again. I, I'm not on that. I, I've never been on that 100. percent But you got to start asking yourself these questions where. When is the guy going to admit that things are completely off the rails? Because match after match after match and loss after loss and draw after draw and one goal or less after one goal or less, the team still plays phenomenally well according to our head coach. Now, I don't know if somebody neglected to tell the man that when he started in MLS, you need to earn points in the standings in order to get to where you want to go. So unless... In his understanding, points don't matter. Like, this is whose line is it anyway? There is something seriously wrong here. And, and, and listen, he brought in, he brought in his guys. He brought in Amagat. He brought in Tati, who up until this point, dude, is, I'm, I'm not convinced that this, this is not going to end well for NYCFC in 2018. Roddy Russell's already saying he's ready for 2019 at this point. Are we ready to throw in the towel and just say, listen, we're done. We're done. Are we there yet? Uh, I, I certainly feel that way. I, I feel that way. And it's sad because I'm like the last person to, to feel that way. I'm always hang on to the last you know, possible minute and, and, and see things through. But at this point, you've got to look back and ask yourself, what is going on? on you cannot come out game after game and say you had good performances where you've constantly dropped points you constantly lose game you can't you you are not playing well i'm sorry once one loss or two losses between two three win winning streaks different story yeah we played well but you know what you know, the only time it's okay for you to say we played well after a loss is if you get beat by a ridiculous goal that the keeper can't stop, or you've hit the post five or six times and the keeper's made three or four big saves against you. That's the only time you should be allowed to say that you played well for uh, during a loss. You can play well during ties because teams can be evenly matched. That's fine. I understand that. But after you lose a game by making two huge mistakes and not being able to put the ball on the net, not even resemble anything close to an attack. Nothing happened. Nothing happened past the box. It was there was nothing. Nothing to be excited about. It was one of the most boring games I've ever seen. Just I I, I don't want to keep going after the numbers where here. Where he's coming from? I don't want to keep going after the numbers here though, dude. But you look at you look at uh, Adrian Heath, the the head coach of Minnesota United. Minnesota United is a team that's given up now 58 goals on a season. They have a minus 13 goal differential on the season. They're in ninth place in the Western Conference. This is a team that is is not going to make the playoffs by any, you know, without some miracle from my understanding of it. They had 32% of possession and yet had two-thirds of the goals in the game to win the game. Now... He's got every right to say his team played well, having 30% of the ball but having two-thirds of the scoreline. Dome has no right to say we played well, this was our best performance on the road. Like, are you ki- I'm sorry, are you nuts? What game are you watching, guy? I, 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 this is the part where the lack of head coaching experience is rearing its ugly head because it's he has no idea. On. Listen, he has no idea no idea how to communicate with his players. He has no idea how to get the most out of them because he was not a talker. He was not a speaker. He was not a motivator. He was a behind-the-scenes guy. He was the puppet master pulling the strings, you know, helping pull the strings, but he was never the voice. He was never the main guy. He was never the one to rally the troops. Unfortunately, that's what we need. We need somebody vocal. We need somebody to instill belief. And he thinks the way of, uh, of – is patting your guys in the back after they lose. Yeah, you guys played really – like, no. You need somebody that's able to light a fire under someone's ass. Uh, I liked it better when he said he wasn't happy when we lost. When Thank we you. Thank I you. I like that much – so much better. Dude, well, we, talk, we talked about that. I want to say it was after we lost to Chicago because it was it – was, I believe it was his second game in charge. 
and we lost to Chicago on the road, and flat out said we played like garbage. Like, I, I commended him for that, and I think I said, I, you guys, go back and find the episode if you really want to, but I, I want to say that I, I praised him for actually saying that, dude. But now, he's just trying to shine up a turd. This is, this is not, this is not good. Um, I, I want to get to some comments here, dude, because we've been, they've been coming through. Can I get Let's to some, it. dude? Let's get it. Christian is saying, it's not like this is a bad team. We were the best in the league until July. And now, honestly, I believe we'd struggle against the worst teams. Look, it's not whether you believe it or not. It's a it's fact. True. <laughs> it's a fact. Okay? You see it in the we've last sh- in 12 games. We've struggled against. So, but, but to the first part of your comment, it's not like this is a bad team. It, this is not like, this is not like Dome came in and, and inherited DC United pre Wayne Rooney. He inherited yeah. a team that was a supporter shield contender, dude. A supporter shield contender. Now we're gonna be lucky if we beat last year on points. This is insane. It's absolutely insane. He's got a he had an incredible team. We even without David Villa, dude, without David Villa in the lineup. He had a phenomenal team, a supporter yeah. shield contender, an MLS Cup contender. Now we needed how many games to clinch a playoff spot? And Columbus is riding our coattails. Philly is is making a run. DC's trying to sneak in there. I'm, I, at what point do you have to point the finger at him? At what point? What, what is it going to take? Is That's it going to take another year and a half until we decide? Listen. Maybe he's treating this like a preseason. Maybe he's, you know, he doesn't have all the players that he wants to to play the system that he wants. Then, then why try to change everything when you're coming in halfway through when the team's got a good thing? Yeah, I don't. I, if that was the mentality, and he's treating this as a, oh, if we blow up in the playoffs, it's no big deal. Um, you can't have that mentality. Not here, at least. Um, you cannot come in and take a, a team, a team that's progressed. More and more each season over the last three years, um, you can't take that and then start over again. You kind of have to see that out. And, um, again, it, it, scheduling wise, it sucks that you have to get a coach in the middle of the year. Um, would they be playing this way if he was here from the beginning of the season? Uh, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I don't know if him getting players that he wants is going to help him. I don't know if he can get the caliber of players he wants. I really don't know. I, you're not going to get, you, you got to remember European what he's used to players. Remember yeah. who, remember who he's used to coaching. Yeah. He Kevin De Bruyne, Sergio Aguero, David Silva, Leroy Sané, Raheem Sterling. There is nobody. There is nobody's name. On the New York City FC lineup, perhaps with the exception of David Villa, that you can even throw in the same ring as a Sergio Aguero or a Kevin De Bruyne or even a Sané, a Silva, or a Sterling. There is nobody even close. No, and he no, is not going to be able to afford the players that even come close to those guys. There is no chance in hell it's going to happen. And with the league t- talking about potentially getting rid of that third DP, you think it's really going to happen? It's yeah, not. No. It, it's not. So, so okay, it, it's this is our this is our dilemma. It, it's who is most responsible, and, and it's it, is it is it a sixty forty split coach players? Because again, now I'll bring this up to you. I'm pretty sure last season the players at one point were fed up with how they were playing and had like a closed doors uh, type thing. Yeah, Am I, right? I don't Am I think wrong? that actually happened. I, no, I think no, that was I think it's something else. No, there was there was talks about that, right? Like, but it, uh, uh, so so listen, where, where I, I, I as a fan, I also want to see that. I want I want the doors to be shut to the media after a game, and I want player the leadership of the team to lay in and to actually speak up and say, "Listen, this is not good enough." We've heard Ring say say something about it. We've heard uh, Tinner Home to an extent say something about it. We need the leadership of this team. Again, where was the leadership uh, uh, on Saturday night? Who was the leader? Because Ring was the captain, he was the leader? I, I don't know. I didn't see any leadership. I see constantly players pointing, telling other players where to play. So that tells me that they don't know their position 
They're they're not grasping the coaching positioning wise. Um, I I I I don't. It's so hard to sit here and point fingers, and everybody wants to blame somebody. And it's it's a it's a collective it's a collective just pile of garbage. That's all it is at this point. It's everybody that it's everybody's at fault. And the the thing is, what's your fastest way to fix it? Is it firing the coach? You can't fire the players. So I think everybody's going to shift blame towards Dumba. And again, is it fair? Not a hundred percent because listen, it could just be because of the injuries and the scheduling and the international duty and not having a full preseason. Um, it could very well be that, but you can't say that these guys won games. These players, not different players. Thank you. These Thank human you. beings That's won the saying. crap ton of games when the season started. It's not like they just lost their talent all of a sudden. That doesn't so go away, dude. Wrong? That doesn't what go away. went wrong? And the thing is, none of us can put a finger on it. We can all speculate and say it's the coach, it's this, it's that, but none of us know. None of us know because it's probably a combination of things that's making things ultra difficult, and I just don't know if this team – has the wherewithal to come back from from this form of play, it, and it's sad because last year the same thing happened. So I yeah, but hold on, it. yeah, but see, okay, all right, and I, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I am because I wanted to I wanted to kind of address that too because we're, we're all pointing fingers at Dome and we're saying, well, no, 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 the NYCFC did the same exact thing last season, right? Did they or didn't they? Because they still finished in second place. Yes, they had to rely on uh, on Toronto uh, getting a result, I think, against Red Bull. But they still finished in second place. Now, let's not forget – we're not talking about what they did in the playoffs because, you know, the past uh, couple playoffs, they've completely sucked completely. I'm talking about regular season here, dude. Despite the fact that uh, – they were crap towards the end of the last season. They still were able to finish in second place. I think from a from a point standpoint, they were better last season than they were this year, even including the end of last season. This is not so so for me, that was not a Patrick Vieira thing. I don't think that was a Patrick Vieira thing. I really don't think so, dude. Because think about it. Look at how we came in flying this season. You know, like, you know, it, it, for me, I don't think I don't think Patrick Vieira was the detrimental part of our season last year. I'd have to go back to the games and maybe watch and look at some of the stats and things like that. But I just don't think that's what it was. Because, dude, he didn't change tactics. It's not like he was changing tactics. Like, Domet listen, changes every he, freaking he, game. But listen, if now, if Patrick were to be able to have the ability to change tactics... With the squad playing the way it was, he would have been I the greatest last coach. Season, I think last season would have been Hunter, absolutely insane. Fine. Okay, so okay, so that was that was that was his that was to his fault. But you can't argue that the guy didn't get us where we were. I mean, dude, the year over year improvement is staggering, absolutely staggering. <clears throat> Our defensive issues have all been have all but been uh, solved, right? We were scoring goals at the beginning of the season with and without David Villa. You, you can't – this is why, like, all all roads are leading to, to Dome and his staff right now. And that's and, – and as much as I don't want to go there, that's where I feel like this conversation is going. It, how, how many games do you have to see – where they play against one of the worst teams in the league and you muster up three shots on target. Oh, and two of them, and two of them are Rodney freaking Wallace. <clears throat> a freaking bicycle kick at the top of the box when he just ran in as a sub. And then he scores the most Tommy McNamara goal I've ever seen. Well, let's, let's be, Tommy puts a lot more effort into those. <laughs> I'm sorry here, man. Like, this is just, I, uh, I, 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 at this point, if if you're gonna if you're not pleased with what you see and you're gonna cut them loose, you cut them loose at the end of this year. Of course, and let, of course. And let someone start fresh, dude. Of it's course. Not, you, you can't go in next year with doubts. And, and honestly, you can't go into next season giving Dome a preseason and a half a season to do the same thing he's doing now. No, because, because then we're gonna, be, we're gonna need 2020 to, to make things happen. Yeah. 
Exactly. And I just don't know. I don't know if, if, I don't know if City Football Group knows enough about this league, has, has studied it enough. I don't know what it is, but I mean, you can't, you just can't come in and, and just quit and just, just lie down and roll over and you can't not know your opponents and you can't honestly if you're not ready don't take the job listen maybe city football group is forcing domain to take this job maybe they're like here we need you to go here for the time being and do something because uh we can't find a coach we want right now and you're their next best option you go there and see what you can do and if you can't win oh well who cares because that club is just a for us it's it's nothing it's just a feeder club and hopefully we can get a couple of you know little specks of gold dust out of it when we're sifting through the garbage. Uh, again, I, I, I can't say it because I don't know and I don't want to speculate and sound like an idiot, but uh, there, there's something seriously wrong. And again, a guy who, who, who is, is tactically smart enough to help win 24 trophies over the last, I don't know how many years really can't be that bad. Again, Help look at with. What he's working with. Help with. Not lead. Right. Help with. Right. But again, you still, you really think that he could be, th- did you really think he could be this bad? Dude, the head coach job is very different from the assistant coach job. It's oh, very from, different. From, but from everything we've heard, he's been the brains. He's been the brains behind everything. And I think it just goes to show you how much you need somebody who's a speaker, who is a vocal leader, who can rally the troops and light fires under the players as necessary. I know everybody wants to get patted on the back. That's great. When you do good things, that's fine. Even when you do great things, sometimes you do poor things and you still need to be reminded of it. And, you know, constructive criticism or or tough love, whatever you want to use. Sometimes you need a guy to sit there and kick you in the ass. I just don't think I think Doma is too soft spoken of a guy to to do that, and it's and it's a shame because I'm sure the guy's brilliant, and I, I get listen, we saw shades of it already, so you can't tell me it's not there. It, this is a is a really really slippery slope when we're going down, and uh, someone's gonna get hurt, and it's gonna end up being either the team or or the coach. Um, again, the, this you fire this guy, who's gonna want to come and coach here? I don't want to go there. If I don't show results in five or six games, I'm going to be, I'm going to be fired. Uh, I, you know, I don't know who's going to want to take that job. And I'm sure somebody will be stupid enough to, but <laughs> it's just, it's, there's so many things that can go wrong from this point. Um, do, do you ship off half of your roster and bring in guys that he wants? And if those guys fail, but you know, that's what another, you that brings up another issue, dude, that brings up another issue. So, so, so effectively, if you're going to invest the time into this manager in Dome, you're going to need at least another year of building because think about it. Let's say he brings in the players that he wants. Let's say by some, you know, act of God, this man's able to bring in the players that he wants to actually implement the, the, the tactics that he wants to implement. What's to say that they're going to gel right away and get a result well, in 2019? Well, well, listen, I mean, we had a lot of guys last season, uh, even this year, we we gelled pretty quickly with a lot of turnover from but you know you had the same coach. You did, you did, but again, the, the players still have to gel. The same coach, same captain, same keeper, very similar back line. Right, yeah, it, but you're getting you're but you're still bringing in players who to them that's their. Right, no, 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 no. I'm, say, I'm talking about if you're saying ship off half your like you know like like you mentioned like is that what you got to do? If that's yeah. the case, then it's then you, you need another year of building. <sighs> okay. I don't know if you need a full year, but you definitely need a transfer window and a full preseason to do that. Um, but yeah, but okay. Patrick had that when he first got here, and they ended up preseason a second sucked. place. Doesn't make a difference. You st- but you still f- figure out what you have and what you don't have. <sighs> How many teams go all and whatever in the preseason and end up winning? You know, finishing at top of the table. Preseason means nothing. It could have been us. Could have been us. Listen. If you take what Dome is doing now and put it in a preseason form, it's fine. He's figuring out what works okay, and what doesn't so, work. Obviously, nothing works. Uh, Jorge on Facebook is saying, so more people like Amagat? Oh, my God, no. I hope not. I hope not. I, I hope not. I don't I don't know what. It, 
he must have some dirt on him or something to have a job right now. Marcus is asking, do you think he would get rid of Maxi and other staples of the team? At this point, I don't know. I don't know what he's thinking. I really don't funny. know what he's thinking. It's funny because when he when they asked him about players in a transfer window, he was like, "That's not my job." Yeah, I'm like, that's Claudio's job. But but you're the coach. You got to go to Claudio and say, "I need a player who can do X, Y, and Z. Go find me that guy." It's not his job. I, 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 it's not my job. And then all of a sudden, now everybody's playing well when they lose, and they play like crap when they win. I don't understand. Everything is backwards. Maybe that's how they do it in England. <laughs> I don't know. I don't they know. Drive on the other side of the road. That's what it is. You that, nailed it. That's what it is. You nailed it. Unbelievable. I, I, Listen, I, I know we really do. We really didn't talk too much about the Minnesota match. Um, I, I just just a couple. Who the cares? Go look back at the last couple of weeks inside Chicago, <laughs> and you'll figure out what the hell happened. Oh my God, I know. Um, it's like a boneheaded freaking play. Uh, and, uh, Sebastian Ibiaga, uh, couldn't follow, uh, his, he couldn't mark his man, didn't even look back at him once, and let somebody come in and rob the house blind. The um, first, the first goal, dude, the first goal was a, uh, a team effort. <laughs> in that Ben Sweat didn't step up to, uh, to Ibarra, uh, and, uh, and Ibiaga just didn't know where Rodriguez was. Like, that was you just, you have to know where everybody, simple. um, you have to know where the attackers are at all times. Doesn't matter if it's your man or not. If someone's behind Ibiaga, you gotta be yelling to him, hey, man, man, there's a man there. You gotta do something. Communication is key. Uh, just, that's why not I say that was, a, that, that was a team goal. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. that was that was a t- <laughs> that was a team goal. The second goal, not so much. That was completely on uh, on Ben Sweat's foot, just deciding to literally pass the ball to uh, Rodriguez. And I mean, listen, you could you could put a little bit of blame on Sean Johnson for that second goal being way too far off his line. Um, but you you got to start with Ben Sweat not looking up and not knowing where uh, Sean Johnson was and where you Rodriguez was. It's just it's just you know chalk it up to that, which is oddly enough. You know, we're going to talk about Ben Sweat in a couple minutes too, but we just because we have to and, and we just – we have to. Who's the dude of the match for uh, for this one, dude? Because I, I – I, Us for having to put up with this. At what point do we start giving it to the fans that travel all the way well, to Minnesota always, no. to watch this? <laughs> and it's cold up there. Guys, um, put, those, uh, put those comments in, dude of the match. Let us know who you think. I want to just I, get to I, a comment here real quick, dude, from uh, Christian Polanco. From uh, the Cooligans. What's going on there, Christian? Thanks so much for joining us. Cooligans there. He says, I think Dome is going through the MLS foreign manager slump. Doesn't fully understand the league yet. Vieira went through it his first year. Yes, I agree. But he also led his team to a second place spot in his first year as manager. So there is that. Uh, we don't know okay. where the hell we're going to end up his with slump, uh, Mr. Dome. His slump. His slump. Came in the you know shortly after the start of the season, and then you had the likes of uh, Lampard and and Harrison coming to life and just injecting beautiful football into this team uh, to get to that point. Um, uh, this is like wrong place, wrong time to to have this slump is really what it is, and it's unfortunate. Um, because it paints the you, you paint the guy in such a negative light. Where listen, he could he could take a head coaching job after this and be the greatest head coach we've ever seen. You know, and under the, the last couple guys, it, it could be maybe who knows. Um, uh, listen, he is his FIFA Ultimate Team must be amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> oh, oh my god. My god goodness but again it, it's a it, I, I could agree it's a slump and is it a lengthy one i think it is i just think it's Gee, placed man. at the most inopportune time and that's because you i think winning, don't match up and i think having a winning record when he first started out of his first four games like ruined us because if he would have came here and we start sucking it would be a totally different story we'd be like listen He's got issues. Like he's just coming. In. He's got no idea what he's doing. We picked up twelve out of fifteen points out of our first five games. <laughs> Jesus! Like we were like, this guy's amazing. 
this guy's amazing. Well, what, well, 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 but just it's just and then it happened? just went away. So I think we're we're what happened? We're seeing more because of that. You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I, I, I think so. I think we had a we had a little taste of what was good, and, <laughs> and we really really wanted to come back. Christian says that the second it was pine cones and not pineapples, I lost faith. No, you know what it was? It was that stupid wave. That wave opened up a realm of, of just We got it. We need to do another one at the last game of the season. The Let's other way it, around. The other way around. The other, <laughs> we got we gotta we gotta <laughs> tilt this boat the other way. We gotta just go revert. Whoever whoever has footage of that game, Roddy, go back and look. Whatever way it went, we're going the opposite we way. We gotta go the game. opposite direction. I, I I know the way it was. Roddy Russell is saying, uh, wait, no, he can't be serious. Ben Swedford due to the match for Minnesota. That's not funny. Um, <laughs> uh, I thought Tajuri had a decent game, even though he didn't really do anything. We got we got to vote for Shroddy here. But we he's, vote for Shroddy. he's a lot faster than I thought he was, man. Yeah, he's got some legs. He but- is quick. He was the only one that was really – it looked to me that was giving like 110% constantly moving down the field. Like he was running into player. I mean, again, he ran into defenders and loses the ball. But um, the effort was there. I, I just – I don't – I have trouble giving it to us again when we play like uh, like poop. I mean, who, so who do you – I mean, you give it to you give it to Angelo Rodriguez for uh... – for picking up the two goals and and taking it, you know, I mean, listen, he he was gifted the second goal, so if he didn't put that in, oh, he was kind of gifted the first one too. <laughs> Man, in fairness, it just wasn't as pretty. Oh, Chris Martinez is saying, "I can't believe I participated in the wave." I'm sorry. <laughs> Terrible. Christian oh, Polanco oh, says, "Reverse the wave to break the curse." That's what we got to do. That's we got to do. It. Let's do it. We'll start it if I have to. Oh, I missed I missed it. Sorry, Roddy. He says, no, you didn't get it. Sweat is Minnesota's due to the match. <laughs> I got it. Sorry. It so now funny. it's funny. Now it's funny. <laughs> when I've got, you know, 50 comments coming up on the screen at the same time, Roddy, I'm sorry. I should have read that a second time. That is my bad. Um, we need that? Roddy's comments to, like, blink brighter. I know, right? So who are we giving it to? Come on, who are we giving this to? This is this is this is ask, ridiculous. Ask, ask the listeners, ask the viewers. I can't. I don't. I don't care. Dude, they're not even. Wait, are we seriously? Are we debating on not giving a due to the match here? I mean, we've 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 spent. Uh, you can give it to An- Angelo. What's his face over there? Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. That's fine. Uh, yeah. The most the most uh, vehement due to the match. I think we've given here, Angelo Rodriguez. Congratulations. You suck. You got the due to the match for uh, for this one. Oh my god, dude! Moving right along. Um, he wrote, "Yeah, Christian votes no due to the match." Yeah, that's that sounds. Dude, about... you and I are slowly turning into the guys from Major League. Uh, dude, <laughs> I know we are. We are I turning know. into Randy Quaid from Major League. You know what's gonna happen? We're gonna. Yeah, I, I got a nod for Rodney Wallace for scoring his first goal in a hundred years. No, thank you. 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 Oh, god, this is good. This is good. Uh, Jorge says the Yes Network for actually showing the game. Ah, there you go. Yeah, they only want to show the ones that we don't win. Yeah, that's that's right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Uh, plowing ahead here, dude. Um, let's uh, let's talk. You know, let's talk about the worst player in the game. Uh, ben Sweat gets the uh, U.S. Men's National Team call up. Um, and and I, I gotta say, you know, I got a little flack for posting it, uh, congratulating yeah, him yeah, and saying you know well what? deserved. Listen, we got a lot of – there's a lot of fans in, in – not just New York, but all over the place. But just they, their their opinion is the only one that counts. And we have a lot of fans that, let's say, uh, just read the cover of books and don't tend to dive into them. Um, I personally, I am in your boat. Uh, not that I have to be because um, we don't always agree on everything. But, yeah, when you look at the guys play over the last season and a half. Two years. Two years from from not having a job to all of a sudden, you know, being called into duty because Margarita, Margarita. was yep. was was hurt so often. Yep. He's done a really, really good job. He's had a lot more ups than downs. Now, certain downs were pretty bad, like last night. I I, I would have to give you uh, like Saturday. Really bad timing. I, it's really really it bad is, timing. It is. And so you're great. So people are letting that take over their emotions and look back at his body of work where. When he's allowed to play the wing that he's used to and run up and make those passes, uh, you know, crosses into the box, yeah, he's great. Oh, we haven't seen that lately. 
Well, it's not his fault. How is that his fault if that's not the style of soccer they're going to play? You cannot fault the guy for not having the same touches he used to or the same runs he used to because the team no longer plays that way. Right. When was the last time you seen Ben Sweat make an overlapping run? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember because he doesn't do it because the team doesn't play that way. The team has totally gone away from playing from their strengths, which he was a big part of. He's a really good left-footed, left-footed, uh, uh, shot. He's a really good left-footed, uh, crosser on the ball. He's got pretty good speed. He's got uh, a knack of, of having good footwork and getting out of tight spots. How many times have we seen, uh, you know, a high pre- a, a pressure come onto him and all of a sudden he makes two moves with his feet and he's, he's got 15, 20 feet of space, it seems like. Um, uh, over the last two seasons, yeah, he damn well deserves a shot to be seen on a bigger level and see what he can do. Listen, if he goes there and he falters, I'm not blaming the team for trying. We got to find talent somewhere. But don't sit there and say he's trash because he's really not. Listen, and again, calling your own players trash, I understand that we poke fun at certain players and have players that like that haven't scored in a year. That haven't scored in a year. But you've got a guy here who's who's done fairly well over the last two years, uh, especially from for not having a job beforehand. Uh in one of the tougher places to play, in my opinion. Uh, when you have fans like we have, you know, that, that, that trash anybody that's not winning 24 seven, uh, for me, it is well-deserved. And I, for one, will be first online to get a Ben Sweat USA jersey, uh, as soon as they make one my size. <laughs> Listen, dude, let's, let's not, and, and some of the comments are putting, are, are, are commenting here. Um, mostly, mostly people are agreeing here. We got to remember, dude, last year, Ben Sweat was a trialist. The guy was wearing an 80-something number in preseason and wound up getting a full-time job. And then, like you said, had to step up because of Mata's really debilitating injury. Oh, and guess what? When Matarita came back, he actually gave Matarita a run for his money, earning starting spots over him. So, and, and, and then actually being able to deliver on that. His touch is fantastic. I, I've, I've commented on Ben Sweat's touch multiple times at the games in Always. the show. Always. Absolutely always. phenomenal. Phenomenal. Always. For an American player to have the touch that he has, it's a very European style touch, which is very, very impressive because most Americans do not uh, have the ability on the ball as well as he does. He can get out of tight spots and he can get a wicked cross in the box when he's able to play in that attacking fullback kind of role. He hasn't, like you said, hasn't been able to do that lately because and of the way they were playing. And when you're playing Matarita uh, in the midfield as well, it gets harder to do that too. So... For me, 100% deserved. 100% deserved. They're, yeah, they're, people want to magnify his mistakes, and it's honestly, he, he, people just need a scapegoat. They need somebody to point fingers at. It was Pirlo last year, uh, or or Briant when it was Briant was terrible, terrible, and all of a sudden, oh yeah, he's really good. He's really good. Yeah, no, no crap. The guy played six great games in a row. Yeah, he's really freaking good. He was always that good. It just so happens that people make mistakes. And again, New York is a tough place, and it's really all about what have you done for me lately. And because they haven't seen anything that they warrant as great, oh no, no, he's, he's trash, he's trash. You know what? Trash is on the streets. We, we have good, solid players that you know we all root for, no matter what. This guy clearly deserves it, and he's got it. And you know what? There's a reason why we're in the stands and not on the field coaching. Yeah, we just get to talk about it. That's it. We just get to well, yell about it sometimes. Yeah, we, we like yell yelling. I like yelling a lot. We're in New York. We're in New York. Well, listen, you've, we've gotten our fill this season. That's for damn sure. Um, yeah. What about Alex Ring? We didn't, we didn't talk about Alex yeah, Ring. Yeah, we will. I just want to get to one his... comment about Ben Sweat here on, oh, uh, we got on Sweaty the ben. Facebooks. David is saying, I've been talking about Sweat making the U.S. men's national team from the beginning of the season. I am so proud uh, of how hard he's worked to get this chance. And Christian Polanco is saying, my only worry – is he seems to have regressed a bit defending. He wasn't getting torched last season like he did against Katai in Chicago, but for the sake of U.S. soccer, he can compete for a spot at left back. He deserves a chance. But again, yeah, Christian, exactly. we're, we're looking at an isolated incident here. Look at – I thought when he played on uh, Wednesday night against Chicago at center back, he played phenomenal. I think this is a guy that you can utilize in a couple of different spots, and 
I thought he had a phenomenally defensive game against yeah. uh, against I, I Chicago the second time. He he has had a couple. Yeah, he he's had more games this year with blunders than last. I think. But again, last year I think you've got to incorporate. He was a little more offensive. Um, you with with playing up up and down the flank. Now I think you just we can't impose the will of the team the last 10 games on just one player because they're making mistakes. It, it, you, you can't do that to the guy. Um, if nothing else, is it fair to give him a shot to create competition and maybe he wins himself a spot there? Who knows? That's fine. But to say the guy doesn't deserve it is foolish. Yeah. It's just, it, 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 look at, look at the, look at the players on the roster. Just go look at the players on the roster. I commented it on Facebook. Go look at the roster and tell me he doesn't belong there. Tell me he doesn't belong there when you go look at who's out when he when he was out there playing. It just doesn't it just doesn't make sense. It just the, the guy needs a chance. And and I'm happy honestly, dude, I'm happy for him. I've I've liked Ben since last season when he came in for Matarita, and I saw what he was able to do on the ball and what he's able to do off the ball. I think he's a solid player, and I think he he again, he deserves a shot. He one hundred percent deserves a shot. Did he make a, a silly boneheaded mistake against Minnesota a hundred percent. And that unfortunately is, you know, what have you done for me lately? It's that that's what we see, unfortunately. But listen, Mm -hmm. had the team come back and put up more than three shots on target and more than a freaking goal against one of the worst defenses in the league. I don't think we'd have the same conversation. We wouldn't even care. So I put more blame on our offense in the last three or four months than I do on our defense, because dude, we haven't really given up more than two goals. Uh, It's been, you know, it, 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 more often than not. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's just silly. But anyway, yeah, like you said, dude, let's, let's, uh, let's wrap up the show with a little, let's, let's finish the show. <laughs> you see what I did there? You see what I did over there? Uh, with Alex Ring retiring, uh, from the Finland national team. Uh, listen, I mean, it's, I think from what I've read and from what I've seen, he seems to enjoy his time here. He realizes that this, this, because the country is so big and the, the traveling is is so demanding um, from week to week, uh, especially this year where you had that Orlando to Seattle fiasco. Um, it, it, with a team that doesn't always qualify for things, um, it, do I blame him? No, he's still a young guy. He still has plenty of football left. I. I I'm sad that he's had to – the league has made him feel this way or he's felt like he has to retire because it's nice having international players on your team. It makes you proud. But listen, for me, international players are the, the cream of the crop at that time. Uh, those are the best that the country has to offer. Those are the guys who are putting in the most work. So if I got a lot of international players, yeah, it's burdened in the schedule – uh, obviously in Europe it's not, but here it is. But if I'm looking at a, a, just a, a national team standpoint, you're 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 it's something to be proud of, and you're pulling the the best of the best, you know, per that period of time, you know, whoever's in form. So if my team's got a bunch of guys that are like that, that means that I've got really great players. I've got really really good players that command the attention of the national team and the coaches, and and they get that more that experience. Uh, unfortunately, in our league, it takes away from it because of scheduling and, you know, because the way the leagues run. But in Europe, it really doesn't. Uh, you know, these guys get their time off and travel isn't grueling. So I, if he was playing in Europe somewhere, do I think he would still be playing? i probably say so. But I think he's become so ingrained in the fabric that is New York, like so many people do, that just come here, don't know what to expect, um, especially as a young man. Um, with a with a family that's that's just growing. Twenty seven. Yeah, it, like again, so he's he's younger than we are. Uh, we know what it's like because we live, you know, and we we can go, you know, frequently. When you're when you're pushed into it, and, and all of a sudden you you're going to explore and finding everything, it's very easy to fall in love with the city, and, and it's hard to then you know transplant yourself back when your kids are kind of growing up before your eyes. Uh, does it mean we'll see him stay for the next couple seasons? I wouldn't mind. I think he's a really solid midfielder. I don't think he's, uh, he's not retiring from soccer. Right. Uh, you right. know, like, but, but again, do you, you know, do you, do, does, do you, would you, if he's going to play with us for the next few seasons, is it better for us that he's not having to go again? It, it, it is. But at yes. the same time, for me it is 
For me, it is. Yeah, it is. But if, if, you know, you do again. You lose that. Yeah, you know, Finnish national team. But you does, know, but it, but it want... doesn't mean that he's not that caliber. Like, right, you know what I mean? Like, right. like, like retiring from the right. national team doesn't mean that you're not capable of playing for the national team or that you're of the quality of right. a national team player. Right. It just means you're not playing for. I mean, Jesus, dude, Messi retired from Argentina twice. <laughs> oh, he's a baby. <laughs> I think I heard something about Diego Maradona said not told him not to come anymore. Like, just <sighs> my advice to him is not. That's ridiculous. Listen, it it's you know I'm not a fan of the way that MLS schedules things, especially around international breaks, because there are not many international breaks. There's international duty in the middle of our freaking season. Um, but uh, so so in that regard, if he stays with us after this season, I'm all for it. I'm you know I'm happy for him. I'm you know it's probably a difficult decision for him to say, hey, I'm not playing for my country anymore. Um, but more power to him. Listen, he's got he's he's got a family. I think they're on vacation now. Uh, you know, taking the next probably probably next couple of weeks off or next week off or so. But which which let's just we're in stoppage time, dude. Week? We're in stoppage time. Let's all wrap right, this so, up. So what did I say last week? I said I would have really liked for this team to play some friendlies. Maybe one, two friendlies, just to uh, scrimmages, just to try to figure out what's working before the actual games that count start up again. And, and we can't, we can't have any friendlies because we're letting players go on vacation. I'm glad. I know they need vacation. You really can't schedule a scrimmage game. You real three weeks. Maybe they three will. Three weeks. Maybe they will. Three weeks. They're not having any friendlies. No friendlies. So you're not. You're telling me that you can't fa- – what are the priorities of this team right now? Because you're not gaining fans by losing. You're bleeding fans on a, what seems to be a weekly basis because of things that are happening. You've got no stadium in sight. You've got uh, a possible DP retiring, another possible DP that's being removed from the league. Uh, what? What? Like what's going on? What is happening? I feel like the world, the world, the the mountain that we've created is was made of sand and not stone, and it's slowly just withering away. Well said, there, uh, Socrates. Uh, Socrates. Uh, Socrates. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get you a freaking Socrates jersey now. <laughs> Un- unbelievable uh unbelievable well listen i think that's probably a good place to stop dude uh thank you guys so much for joining us for episode 127 hey quick shout out to uh to my parents for hooking me up with this uh cosenza kit this is a Serie b team in italy my parents just came back from a three-week stint in italy so how about that so uh thanks for bringing me back this this lovely jersey and uh just you hope the Serie b decides to start actually playing soccer again i don't know well Maybe. they do they have been playing yeah but they're still they have, no. They've been they've been playing. I don't know how it's been doing, but I checked the scores and, and it's still happening. Cosenza's lost their last two games. I know that. Oh, so they're definitely playing. So they're um, definitely playing. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. So so there's that. Make sure to give us the follow. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We are at Dudes in Blue. Hopefully, we'll have something uh, pretty fun for you guys next Monday night because yeah, I don't there's know what the hell we're, we're not going to be pissed off. <laughs> hey, we have nothing to be pissed about. So, we just play uh, FIFA. Let's just play FIFA for for an hour. Let's do that. Let's do like yeah, maybe we do like a like a FIFA episode or something. But anyway, <laughs> uh, guys, thanks so much for spending time with us. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Dudes in Blue. Uh, leave us the review on iTunes and Facebook if you like the show. We really do appreciate all of your feedback and thanks so much for hanging out with us. But we will be back next week. And as always, stay, stay blue. Blue. <laughs>